Hey Snackers, you just didn't get enough last time. So join us for episode 27 of DevNet Snack Minutes, where we have more of Flo, our favorite DevNet developer advocate, talking more and giving a demo about industrial sensors in Meraki. Hey everyone, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander, developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. And welcome to episode 27 of DevNet Snack Minutes. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10 minute, all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff that we do here at DevNet. And the cool stuff we're going to be talking about this week is a follow-on from last week's episode where Flo Pockinger, uh, one of our developer advocates, talked to us about some IoT solutions across two different platforms. And today we brought him back to show us some demos of those solutions and how we can use those sensors in real-world applications. So Flo, I'm going to turn it over to you first. Um, I know you have some demos kind of queued up for us. Uh, why don't we jump right into them, brother? Perfect. Thanks, Kareem. And thanks, Matt, for this opportunity again uh, to give uh, Meraki IoT and Cisco IoT such a present here. First of all, I would like to give you a really cool sneak peek uh, of what we did in the uh, Frankfurt uh, Cisco office here. So first of all, like uh, we deployed Meraki MV cameras and MT sensors in our office there. So you see here, actually, we are recording from an MV22X camera in the Cisco Meraki, uh, in the Cisco Frankfurt office. And here on the right side, you can see the Cisco Meraki open closed door sensor. So when any employee or any, uh, any person visiting here is going through the door, we are actually uh, recording. Um, and here you can see the employee is basically walking out there. And the good part is you actually can do snapshots based on the timestamp of your open closed door sensor. So we are actually doing this one here. We are saying, hey, get, give me the latest entries there of the, uh, of, the, um, um, of the camera. And you see here actually the snapshot based on the sensor data there. Uh, just here, uh, what I would like to, to notice here or to say is definitely that we are recording here. Like it needs to have a specific uh, license and under the German laws, you need to have, of course, uh, some uh, data and some, some shields uh, saying that, hey, we are recording, uh, which we did in this scenario here. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, and, and so I'm assuming those snapshots were taken via API and, uh, and how, were, how, how are the, are the, is the data stream from the Meraki thing sensor, the MT sensor, is that a REST API or is there, uh, are we using MQTT as we mentioned in the last session for that? Exactly. So this is, this, that, that's a very good question. So what we actually doing is that uh, when you see here the sensor, uh, which is basically giving or uh, sending a timestamp and saying, hey, I was opened, this is actually stored uh, on the sensor locally for a couple of days, but then again in the Meraki dashboard. Uh, and okay. there you actually can, via the snapshot API, you actually uh, get the screenshot, which is a REST API, based again also on the REST API of this specific uh, sensor. And then you basically match it and say, hey, I would like to have based on this timestamp, this snapshot, and then you download it locally uh, to your server, uh, such as this dashboard here. And, and the camera takes snapshots based on motion automatically, is that correct? So the camera can also, uh, based on specific parameters, do uh, and, and uh, take some snapshots there. And uh, this is the cool part is as well that the camera has also an MQTT uh, client actually directly on, uh, on the camera running where you can send specific output um, to your local MQTT broker and forward it to your dashboard. And uh, I also have here prepared a really cool demo there where we can jump right into it. So we have here actually a really simple MQTT script. So they are usually uh, uh, on POW MQTT is the library which is being used here. And uh, you can of course have some functions there. So what, can, what should be done on connect so, so please subscribe to the specific um, MQTT topics there. And uh, of course, when you would like to connect it uh, to your MQTT client, you also need to state it here. So basically I'm connecting to my local MQTT broker uh, and which is then again connected to the camera there. 
And before also jumping into this MQTT connection, uh, let me also uh, check here and, and share with you uh, what you need to do on a Meraki dashboard, which is super easy. So while you're doing that, um, I would like to call, call out that these MQTT processes work as a, a, a publication and subscription type model. And you can see you might have caught in the code previously, or at least I caught in the code previously, that um, the actual topics, uh, those broad detections, the actual areas in the light uh, changes uh, were also listed in your code as well. So this is where the, we actually get those values for those topics. Exactly, Matt. So this is ex here, like we're in the Meraki dashboard of the specific uh, MV camera. And uh, Meraki have this Sense API. And this is actually a really cool thing because there you actually can uh, use and select um, the MacBook here, in my case, as the MQD broker. And here are the specific topics of what kind of information you actually get out of the camera in um, just weird, simple MQG topics. Like you get really actual information out there. So for example, you can define in specific zones um, where a person is, be, where a person is, where a vehicle is actually, uh, the light settings, and even the audio detection there. And if you're a bit unsure about the zones, so you can actually really simply define the zones here in uh, in this specific uh, setting here there as well. Let's actually jump now again uh, to the back to the code here. And here, like when we connect it to the camera to our MQTT broker, we connect also here our script uh, to the MQTT broker. Let it run uh, the loop forever, like to get actually the messages there, as you've seen before. So we are actually. Uh, connecting here the uh, audio detections, the light sensors, and even raw detections there. Uh, let's actually run it. So I will uh, run the script here. And based on this one, you actually see here, hey, I'm here right now, where like one person is in the zone left. You can see the, the Lux input, so like uh, how bright it is. So if I put my, my hand in front of it, you can see definitely it goes down, it goes darker. Um, if I'm going out of the picture there, you can see there as well. So I'm not in the picture there as in now. So you can see if I go uh, ahead, like it's uh, definitely like the, um, no person is, is there. So this is all the actual data what you get. And this is such a small data set. Like uh, imagine you need to, of course, uh, have the whole image or the whole image sent to your cloud. You can just use your text data uh, to actually get actual information there. Is the Lux value directly sent from the sensors, or is that a is it a, a calculated value based on a formula? This is actually uh, really like a, the there's a light sensor inside the camera where you actually can see uh, based on uh, on the specific like on the darkness like is it dark is it not dark uh, is it uh, should the camera basically move to the night mode so this is actually built in, into the uh, MV camera there. Got it. I could see where that would be used in like security situations where a warehouse isn't supposed to have the lights turned on and you could set a trigger off of something like this to say, hey, send me a message if the Lux value goes above 10 when it's not supposed to be above that. that would, that's a, those are some of those security use cases are pretty helpful with the light, change in light values. Right. Um, also, what, uh, what I definitely would like to mention, the newest edition, uh, which I didn't have access to yet, is like uh, that we actually have also audio detection. So if uh, the camera has also an onboard microphone, so you can also get VR MQTT audio detection there. So for example, if a serene or if an alarm, like a fire alarm is, is actually uh, turning on the building, the camera can detect this alarm and VR MQTT can say, hey, alarm, uh, something is happening. This is also here in the code. So you can see here in the audio analytics there, and you can see here like on the, on the message part, that uh, you have actually here as well uh, an alarm output where it says, hey, it's a fire alarm, it's a police serene. So you can definitely also uh, get here some audio detection there and put also some intelligence there. That's really cool. Hey, Flo, I got a question for you. Um, this code that you're showing us today and, and some of these sample use cases, um, are, are people able to get those yet on, on Code Exchange or Automation Exchange? Perfect. Yes, this, that's a very good point there, Matt. So let me also go uh, to our GitHub. So if you would like uh, to test the script and uh, you would like to test also and get MQTT data or via the REST API uh, of the Meraki dashboard to get the to test the snapshot API, you actually go to our can go to our Cisco DevNet uh, GitHub, and um, I've created here the MVMT script collection there. 
So uh, there is some cool starting points where you actually can uh, test out uh, the MQT settings, the sensor readings of the latest uh, of the latest sensor, uh, and even also uh, snapshot API, and also how to read actually the RTSP stream uh, out of the camera uh, with OpenCV. So feel free to add it. Feel free to add uh, some some your code there, and and of course use it, uh, which definitely will help you to get started in this uh, in this technology here. This is awesome flow. I'm gonna actually get to play with this because I have this uh, in my my setup here. So it'll be really handy to some to implement some of these use cases at home. Thank you, Flo, for joining us today, and uh, thank you for coming back, uh, Snackers. Thank you for watching, and see you next time on our next episode of DevNet Snack Minute.